Hey there, everybody. Good morning. At least it's morning here where I am in Flagstaff, Arizona. And this is part three of the water painting workshop. And perhaps the final. I won't be going indefinitely. I won't be going on and on on this particular workshop. I can't, I can't cover everything that I've learned over a lot of years about painting water, but it is such a pleasure to be doing this. It's been a, a huge privilege, a lot of fun uh, doing the last two videos. We've got my brother Ben here to give a hand. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, let Ben say hello real quick. Oh, there he How's is. How's everybody doing? From Good the infinite, infinite tunnel of windows there. <laughs> All right. Okay. He's there looking out. So, so uh, we're going to be watching the chat. And we are going to, the reason that happened is because I got to get on the right screen on my computer. So we're going to be watching out there for any questions you've got along the way. That's really important. I want to be able to cover the things that matter to you if you're watching, especially if you're following along. It makes this more useful to future viewers as well. And so this is the painting that we left off on. We were painting uh, not just the reflective surface of water that has ripples and texture, but we were adding color and light beneath it. And so if you want to know more about that, you can go back, watch those first two parts if you haven't already seen them. So some important things that came up was uh, things pertaining to movement. So before I move on to an entirely different scene, I'm going to try to put... Uh, a, a couple last touches. Oh, hey, Brian. I got Brian, my, my friend, helping me operate the cameras and things here in the studio. And um, let's just go ahead and um, dial it. We, we got some background noise. Just under that microwave, there's a plug on that refrigerator there. Yeah, if you go, you got to kind of dig. See under Shut the toaster. The background noise. <laughs> Shut it down. You got to get the background noise out of here. We got people yeah. trying to learn stuff here. We don't need to hear that. Man, the little things. One of these days, maybe we'll have a million dollars to put into a beautiful studio without that. <laughs> One of these days, I got 10 already, man. Come on. Uh -huh. Tell me more. All right. Good. There's things I don't know about my brother, I guess. All right. We are very excited about the uh, video that we just released that Ben did all of the shooting and editing on. Ooh. And so uh, the view counts are looking fantastic. I want to thank you for the support. If you've been one of the people that has taken a, a look and watched through that video, we went on site four different locations in order to paint from imagination in the studio by observing the real thing. So it was quite an adventure. Hence the name, The Adventure of Painting. I just, I thought it That's might be. True. I mean, I, I did all the shooting and editing and everything, yeah. but Joe thought of that name. So credit to Joe for that pretty sweet name. <laughs> Is it good? I don't know if it's good. I just, you know, I was kind of, I was kind of fishing for a good name. Well, the best is yet to come, everybody. We got uh, three more of those things dropping very soon. Yes. And, yeah. That's what I was getting to. We got more coming that I'm super excited about. So uh, we're going to release that in just a couple days. So keep your eye on the Mural Joe channel, just the same channel that you're watching now. And we'll release that video. Our intent is to make a show. And you are a big help in turning that into a show by just spreading the word. Just watch, watching it and spreading the word. It's a big help to us. Yeah, um, I mean, you guys are out there in Canada, Sweden. Um, where else are we at? Mississippi. Um I'm missing some uh, Orlando. So hey, know, I was like, just in Orlando, in. dude. All right, we got, we beautiful, got beautiful. Right here. Here. All right, cool. Okay, so let's put some let's put some finishing touches on our water picture here. And so let's let's go ahead and flip over to our to our close camera. And what I'm what I want to show you just a couple little tricks. Okay, you can do some fun stuff once once you've added the light under the water. Let's say you want to put a few little ripples in there where, where the light's coming down and hitting it. So I can actually take my colors. I think I saved the, I think I saved the colors I had. Yeah, let's get this. So these, let me, let me, yeah, you can see them here. If I, if I just hold them up, you can see this is my turquoise and my bright yellow that I've been using 
to get that effect there. I'm going to see if see if one here is a little brighter. And so I'll pull those out again, and I'll put a little bit of light. It's called caustics. You know, something I've talked about a lot. It's not it's not new to a lot of you, but I'll show you my method of just plugging it into the picture here in order to get the, the fun effect of it. So we've got some sand color. I better get some of my orange. I'm going to use some of this orange too. When I need a when I need a brown in here, you know, I can actually just use a bright orange, which is what I mixed to uh, create that because it mixes with this dark turquoise color and creates a brown. So I never really use it in that full in that full brightness. It functions as a primary. You know, I would consider this primary orange for the purposes of the painting. Now, let's go ahead and put a wave in here that's going to maybe tumble in forward just a bit. We'll put the bright light just striking through here. Okay, so I, I did that direction because it already feels like I've got the waves tumbling this way. Now, I want to remember that where I have light concentrated nearby, I have light uh, pulled away. So there's only so much light. If you put more in one spot, you can put less in the other spots near it and enhance this effect. You know, I don't know how vital that is to getting a good, good look, but I just thought it was pretty cool when I realized that that's what was happening. The light was, was not just brighter in the one area, it was also darker in the nearby areas because it was getting pulled out of those areas and put into, you know, I think I just love concepts about balance and, and to realize oh, light is in limited supply and so there's always a balance, the places that it is and the places that it's not. So I'm going to make a gradient that goes into my dark water. All I did was do the bright yellow and then I put some of the orange and now I'm letting this turquoise that I used for all this deep water mix with that. And I just do it quickly while it's all still wet. You can you can lean toward the green side, you can lean toward the yellow side, however bright you want to make it. But that gradient right there can create the feel of a larger wave that's casting the light down. And so now all it needs is a little bit of the reflection on there. So let's take the reflection color that I mixed. This is a little bit a little bit different. I feel like I adjusted that while I was while I was painting earlier on. So to get a good reflection color, I usually put a bit of red or a bit of magenta, something to make it more purple. That's that's the goal, is to make it more purple. So I'll grab my bright red. And this right here is a good bright red, just, just a bright red from a paint store. You know, I don't, I don't get too particular about exactly where they come from. Seems like on all different jobs, I'm getting my paint from all different places, depending on what's available. So this reflection color, if I did it with that, it would look all right, but not great. What really makes it instantly look like reflection is that it has that touch of red to it. So I'm gonna grab just, just a little bit of this. This red's all bunched up in the can. I don't know if that's gonna be too much. Let's just put that little bit in there, see what that looks like. Grab some more. We want something that looks like more of a, a gray violet blue rather than a turquoise blue. There, see that? See how that red just turns it a touch on the purple side. That's good, that's what I want. And that is the color that will look like blue sky reflecting off of this water rather, rather than just blue. If I was painting the sky itself not reflecting, I probably wouldn't bother adding that, that touch of red to it, but I want this to look like reflection. And there's this cool thing that happens when, when it reflects that it seems to turn more purple. Okay, so now reflection over the top. Do a few little strokes here. I'm gonna rinse my brush and then, you know, maybe go right under this, put, put a soft edge under it. Then it kind of looks like it's rolling a little bit. See how that kind of adds a little bit of a rolly look. Let's go like that. And then if we have that, 
we have that light there, we might also have the water turning this way. So put a little reflection right along this line. If nothing else, maybe just to obscure it a little, make it look like it's underwater. So I can get that bright look right there, or rather the look of the bright light hitting the bottom. And then I'll just find a couple spots that I can enhance it with some of these little dots of the yellow. Maybe put a few squiggles in there too, because if it's a longer wave, you know, it might be showing, might be showing a window to deeper water. Might be like a window showing the deeper water. <laughs> I didn't quite see that right. Like that. And then maybe you have some, uh, maybe maybe a little bit of foam could be on that also. If, if it's tumbling enough, you might have like a, you know, a little bit of, you know, let's get pure white and put some foam on there just for giggles. Let's see what it looks like. Grab some of this pure white. And go like this. They're just dabs. I'm just scribbling like a kid with markers, you know, just having fun. But it's wet on wet, so so you know there's usually a method to my scribbling. Uh, you know, I look for edges. I try not to destroy my shapes too much when I when I'm trying to get texture. I got to do a video on texture. Someone's recommended that a while back and I think it's a fantastic idea. I just I just never got to it. Yep. So, you know, I'll do a a video on textures. When I'm doing a lot of brush strokes real fast, I'm really just trying to get rid of edges. I see edges all over here. And I'm just targeting those rather than trying to build a tumbling wave. I'm just scanning real quick, looking for the looking for the the uh, larger shapes that can be broken apart systematically, just looking for little edges to break apart. So then we've got a wave tumbling in, you know, that can finish off the foreground real nice like when you add that in. And then if I want to put foam, let's just grab some pure white. Normally I might color the foam a little bit, but you can get away with doing pure white as well. You can put a little, I don't know, let's put a thing of foam right there and let's put a few little strands coming off of it. But the thing about foam, you want it to taper skinnier and skinnier as it reaches out to its friends. Okay. Then we're going to go like this. We're going to put another one here, reaching out like that. You know, it reaches out because they get pulled apart. The water pushes up in the middle, pulls them apart. So we'll do lots of zigzags because the, the uh, perspective of this is, is very horizontal. It's going out there like that. So we can put lots of zigzags, you know, uh, the shapes, they get scrunched by tipping this way, the perspective scrunches them. So I'm kind of looking for the shape of the water that I've already developed and trying to, trying to stick with that. I feel like if you do a couple good ones, you can get away with a lot of bad ones. A couple good ones really buy you some, some forgiveness on the rest. <laughs> that's my, it's one of my favorite techniques in painting. Do a great job in one spot and then get away with murder on a few others. <laughs> Let's totally destroy it. Okay, I'm not going to go too much further. I just wanted to show you that this is a fun little finish that you can put on a water scene. And, you know, this goes further than, than just trying to paint this from imagination, understanding that these are the parts that are very consistent. And when you look for them in a, in a photo, you'll be able to find it. You'll be able to find those parts and quickly recognize them and have a strategy for reproducing them perhaps in just the shapes that you see. Let's put some water going out there like that. Maybe we can put a few of those bright. I've got a real watery brush right now, so it might be fun to come in here and zigzag some of these, some of these little doodads in. Here, let's find the already bright areas. Zigzag those doodads. Here's a little doodad. <laughs> That's what they're called, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, that's what they call them where I'm from. Yeah. I learned some new words when I was down in Florida this week. They I'm say doodads in Florida? No, they don't say doodads. No, I learned some other new words that were of, of equal value. 
you know, are they age appropriate? No, for our- no, no, we're not. Gonna- <laughs> <laughs> no, man, there's we- a, there's some good folks down there though. Man, did I have a good time. I was in Orlando area. Then I, I did a job for a few days that I didn't finish. And uh, then I had to go south, see my buddy Vince that helped me, helped me with the big cloud uh, job that we did in Richmond, Virginia. And we did another real big one that I still have to post. I still don't have everything in place to do that. But I went and paid him a visit. That was real fun. Seeing his hometown finally. Wrestling is a big deal down there where he lives. I never would have thought. What kind of wrestling are we talking about? Dude, like Hulk Hogan wrestling. Uh, like okay. like if you're down there, you might. The you only might. kind of wrestling. The real kind. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Dude, you don't want to say it's not real in the wrong crowd. Yeah, I don't, don't do say that. Like that. It's serious. All right, so I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this a rest and move on to a different subject. But I just wanted to show you when you have that foundation established, you know, with the with the light underneath and everything, you can come in here and add these in. Uh, understanding they have a place to fit. I'm looking for the areas where light's already showing up, and and then just enhancing them. So it's just kind of fun to be able to do that. Now in the background, if you want to do a good background real fast, so we're going to move up here and we're going to do some, I don't know, just, just some generic trees, maybe some green islandy look. I want to be careful not to make it turquoise. When you light in a blue, it turns very turquoise or a green. When you light in a green or a blue green light, you know, we, we see things outside and, and we can interpret it to be those colors. But when it goes into the distance and the atmosphere covers it, you really don't want that turquoise color if you want it to look distant and covered in atmosphere. So I'm going to use this same reflection color that has the purple added. And I, that's just my underwater color right there. That's all it is. I'm going to add this. And I'm going to try to make a gray green and it's gray because I'm lightening it with a purple rather than with just a white or just a light blue. I just don't want to see the turquoise color. So if you use the purple instead, so, you know, let's say we want this to be a little greener in some areas. I'll add yellow just to prove the point, you know. You want to put hey, speaking nice of background. speaking of yellow, uh, we got some some solid requests here to get Hulk Hogan in his yellow shirt jumping into that water. What do you think about that? <laughs> awesome! If I had time to squeeze that in, that would be fantastic. Dude, but Hogan in there just doing his thing in the yeah, water. My fear would be that he will find the video and then he'll find me next time oh. I'm down there. <laughs> yeah, uh, what I meant was bulk. Bogan, can you do both <laughs> right. Bogan and his right. orange? Right, right, right. The copy, right? Friendly. <laughs> yeah, got it. No, that's not you. Okay, so I'm adding this reflection color because it's it's more on the purple side, and I'm adding enough. See see that touch of red that it has? So it's okay to see green, but we don't want to see turquoise. Just, just a pro tip. If you want your distance to look really nice and distant, keep the turquoise out of it. And then you'll get this nice, nice atmosphere, atmospheric look. We can go darker too here. Let's do the underwater color, just because that's what I got sitting on the sitting on the table here. Got the underwater color, and I'll throw some red in it. It's already got the it's already got the green. It's a slight turquoise. I added just a touch of yellow to it. So if I add the red, it's going to take out the turquoise. And we end up with more of just a just a gray blue. You know, you just don't want to see that. Don't want to see that turquoise. Hey, just a quick note to say welcome to you folks in uh, Gaza City, India, South Africa, California, the right. Netherlands. I mean, you guys are coming in from all over the place. This is this is so fun for us to see you guys. Sweet. All right, man. Cool. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. My dream is to go back to two. Oh, thanks a lot, Brian. You got it. We got quality control here. Brian's like, you're on the wrong wrong camera. Hey, Brian, rein them in, man. Don't don't let that slack out too far. I tell you, these artists, you know, 
they can be good at one thing. <laughs> so I'm putting a little bit of green highlights and seeing those highlights, you know, that's where the bright lights maybe hit in your background. So I'm not too concerned about the green. That's a good thing to see that green, but where it transitions into my blues, that's where I really want to watch out for it being turquoise. So this red, you know, <laughs> it seems wrong. It seems wrong just taking primary red and blasting it in there, but then I just blend it, blend it until it's no longer red, but it's just a very kind of gray violet color to create the distance that I'm looking for. All right, then we've got a scene. We've got something there. You can see we've got our we've got our waves. So now we want water in motion. You know, we're going to talk about doing water in motion. So when I'm when I'm doing water in motion, the uh, I I'm not just doing tricks, you know, I'm not just finding the trick that works for that kind of water in motion. I'm, I'm actually thinking through what, what the water's doing in order to use these exact same principles to create that. And now that's my method. I, I'm not trying to tell you a right way, but I want to be as helpful as possible. So I, I would encourage you to uh, strive to become create these things because just because of how much it's helped me to try to understand the movement and then add these same elements, the light from beneath, the light from above, the bouncing, and then what it does when it's coming through that surface. Those are things we talked about in order to create this one. So I'm going to leave that background and let's switch over to the other camera again. And now we're going to turn this into a maybe some cascading water so let's turn this into like a river scene coming toward me so this is where i'm going to pull out the primary colors in quartz because i just want to slam this with paint and make some progress so step one is to get little spillable things out of my way so i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to have these little guys in here because I just want to be bah, 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 with the big ones and be able to be like real choo choo. Yeah. <laughs> not trying to spill. Yeah. Nice. I don't know why I need the sounds. They just help me feel like. Oh, I know. I know. It's because yeah. you're there, man. You got to be there. Bah, to bah, make bah. <laughs> Batman. I yeah, cannot man. do it. If I don't do the sounds, I'm just so restricted. I just need it. Even if I'm not awesome, it makes me feel awesomer. You know, I just make it kind of like when you're a kid and you're being a ninja. I'm pretty well, sure that ninjas don't make sounds. <laughs> <laughs> At least not out of their mouth. Well, you know, they might out of their mouths. Well, when, the when you're a five-year-old, you sure do, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely. Or a 40-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Five-year-old, 40-year-old body. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, man. That's what I am pretty much. Just one that had to grow up, didn't have a choice. People started looking at me funny for staying a kid too long. All right, so I'm just pulling open these these cans. I, I'm going to put black. I guess I won't need that bright green. We don't need that. And and I'm not too sure what my exact layout is going to be right here. So let's put some water on here. I want water flowing over rocks. I yeah, think Joe, Baron, Baron Von Go cat says be the water. Oh, hey, thanks for tuning in again. I recognize the username. All right, cool. Uh, it says what kind of water now? Be the water, man. Be, be the water. Like, oh, yeah. Like think, Bruce Think Lee, like man. water. As in the words of Bob Ross, think like water. Yeah. Okay. I believe. I believe. Okay. Let's go right there. Black. This is going to be a rock. I got to build what the water is flowing over. So a quick lesson on rocks. I want to put the dark shadow near the near the base. I want it to transition into color as it goes up into the light. So then I'll highlight it with white and maybe also some yellow in order to make the light on it. But I was careful when I added the black, I kind of stayed off of that area. These are going to be rocks here too. So this is my color area. 
Right here Dude, we got did rock. you really just put a bunch of brown all over your pretty water? That's not brown. That is rock, rock in the light color. That's crazy. What that is. You are Dude. crazy. It's not, you know, the water, it's it's an experiment. Is every picture. You know, we forget how fun it is to draw just for the moment and and uh, just just let it be garbage. Your your room here is mourning the loss of your blue water. <laughs> yeah, but the good news is it's recorded on video. But wait to see how fun this picture is going to be. Then you, then you'll be glad I painted over that dumb old water. It's like a place you've already been. You're like, okay, that's cool. Let's go to a new place. That's right, man. Have the courage to venture out. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I gotta I have to share some bad news with everybody. We were talking about new places. I had to move forward in life this last week because little Angel died. Angel little, the Chihuahua. Uh, if yeah, you want to see a uh, little Chihuahua. If you want to see Angel in a video and see my devastating loss. Go look at my video, how, no, how to not make money. That's the video, how to not make money. And in that video, she's keeping me company while I try to be a mechanic. That's why it's called how to not make money. Love you, Angel. Yeah, she died. She had heart failure and we we medicated it for a while, but you know, age age happens and so I was like, this is a place I have to go. I can't delay this. I can't just keep delaying it because it's it's the forward that I must face. So what you're telling me is that what you're doing right now on this canvas is perfectly in sync with the natural way of the world. <laughs> that's what it is. Is that what yeah. I'm vibing on with you right uh, now? Oh man, that's where the joy comes from for me is, is uh, you know, the freedom to create a new thing on demand right here. Hey, I want to go to a river. I'm going to create some rocks and then I'm going to splash some water over and I'm going to landscape my river right now, just like this. So my method here is, you know, decide the color. And then where I have the color, where I have my most color colorful areas, I will do one of two things. I'll put shadow on it or put highlight on it. But I won't do both very much. And I got a whole live stream video on this one too. So I'm not going to over explain this. Hopefully I just want some rocks to tumble some water over. So here I added black to my color. See that, see that lovely shadowed color. So my white is going to go where I have my color, not where I have my black. So when you use just two color, this, this is the value of a midtone. You know, this is what really helps with the midtone is separating your highlights and your shadows. Okay, so we got our color. <laughs> it makes sounds, it makes sounds. All right, and I think, doesn't this look like water could just tumble, tumble right down in there? Let's do it, let's make water tumbling right down through there. So I'm gonna put it cascading over these rocks a little bit. I'm gonna put it tumbling in this valley. So let me darken it a bit. We'll grab the black, cut this out. It's like a chisel. When this paint is nice and heavy, it's still wet. I can just chisel it out. And I'm, I'm just making my shadows bigger so that I've got a bit more room to put my little tumbling stream in there like this. Now here's something real cool. When we get to the video that we are releasing in a couple days. Ooh, boy, are we oh excited. man. You're going to see this. You guys keep saying there's a lot of chatter out here about uh, you know Bob Ross, Joe is is Bob Ross incarnate or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, when we put together the concept for this show, uh, I always kind of thought of it as Bob Ross meets Planet Earth. That BBC documentary show and the yeah. crazy camera stuff right. and the animals and stuff. So this Best episode ever. two, uh, Bob Ross means Planet Earth. You don't want to miss that. It's coming up in two days. All right. Good. Good plug there, Ben. Way to go. Appreciate that. I'm a great plugger. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. And I also want to let you know that we are releasing full-length versions so well well the one on YouTube is meant to stay entertaining. 
We don't want to uh, bore everybody that's just trying to, to see something cool happen. And we're trying to make a, a show, something that can be on network uh, or on television. And so there's two different versions. And so a lot of people are uh, becoming members at the site, a new model that we've moved to so that you can just subscribe. You can pay to have access to the content for as long as you want. While you're working through a painting, you can do that. You can unsubscribe at any time. And that allows me to just continuously put lengthened versions that are probably a bit more than people surfing through YouTube <laughs> want to watch through. But for those of you that are really wanting to learn, we get down to the nitty gritty about the tools and the things I'm using to paint those so that you can try it yourself. So take a look at the uh, membership option at my site, muraljoe.com. Yeah, great point. The The lessons are twice as long as the uh, content you'll see on YouTube. So yeah. if you are watching it, finding yourself um, desiring more than the the fast stuff, you know, then you are in the mood for that full length lesson. That's it. That's it. I remember how frustrating it was. I just uh, I just closed the window that's up to my left in order to give you a little better view. There was some glare happening on this. So you can see a, a bit better now the dark shadows color above the shadow. If, if you look, you know, I, I know it looks like I'm just slop, slopping the paint on there, but we go shadow, color, white. That's, that's how I, I do that in order to get a three-dimensional look on these rocks. So here's what I do next. I'm gonna grab the same reflection color, the same one that I used on my little ocean scene. And I'm gonna do these, these little uh, bits of water cascading off of these rocks, like that. That's gonna be cascading water. We'll go like this, and I'm gonna put enough pressure that it starts to cut through like this, and leave some of that color showing from behind. I'm not gonna do them all at the exact same height. We don't want that. So the placement of this is just below where it starts to turn dark. Do you see how it's starting to turn dark? And then I go just below. That's because the surface of the water, let's put some reflection so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's say water's flowing over this rock. All we got to do to make water flow over that rock is put some reflection on there. And I've strategically mixed that reflection color to have, to have that purple hue to it so that when I do this, it very quickly resembles reflection instead of just a light color. So that puts it, you know, right, right in harmony with what we've all seen a million times. And so when you see that at a glance, it's like, oh, that looks like reflection coming over those rocks because it's that color in that shape with this pattern happening. So we're gonna take this and just put it cascading over this rock. Let's put a little bit coming down this one right here. And so this can really help is understanding why that shape happens. When water comes off an edge, it's really, it's like a curling wave in the ocean. It's like a bubble. There's air behind it. It's shooting off that edge and there's air behind it. And that air bubble is reflecting the light. So when you see this, this bright area, all that light color, that reflection is happening on the air bubble that's beneath the water not happening on the highest surface of the water, if that makes sense. So then on the top, if I add some pure white right there, I can enhance that look, make it brighter up here so, so that the top is the brightest part. Let's just use pure white to make the biggest areas look like they're really tumbling off there. I'm getting a bit heavy on my paint, so I might need to, might need to find some new areas to do it to, then come back. So let's put a few more cascading here like this, just get rid of some of my paint. Maybe I'll try going up too, but I don't wanna get rid of that brightest area at the top. See that? See how that soft gradient starts to look like the water shooting out? Because we want that gradual change because it's usually on a curve as it's facing more and more upward. All right, let's go in here and do a few. Let's grab some of this. Little bit in here, a little bit in here. This, like this. And I wanna see that dark color in there coming up from underneath, like that. Then a little brighter at the very top. 
maybe just a few little spots too, because it's just where the light is hitting the highest part and is more reflective. All right, then we're going to take more reflection and put it on top of these rocks. Wherever I have, you know, I've got my shadows already defining the shapes of my rocks. So wherever I want to put, wherever I want to put water, I just add that reflection and just remember more reflection as it gets more parallel to your vision. So probably the further away you get because it gets more parallel to your line of vision as you get further. Okay, so then in here, we can put some reflection to define our little stream in the middle too. Let's just go straight across like this. And let's say this is really tumbling, so we're not gonna make it too dark because we want some white water in there. We're just gonna put straight lines. We're gonna be real careful to make straight lines coming in here like this because water lies level, you know, and the perspective really, really maintains that. So if I keep the texture of this all real consistently horizontal like this. Now this is where we can talk about water in motion if I just add a slight angle to that, if I just go like this, these lines are going to be barely off of level, okay? This way, this way. I'm trying to make them mostly level, like this. Now I'll put a couple more in there, coming from the other side. I've got the middle flowing faster than the edges, a common pattern in streams. So tipping it down, but look, see how this is arched? I don't want that arch. Our eyes are real sensitive to these things. And so trying to accurately represent that texture, maybe I'll find an area where I can do it a little bit bigger to make it easier to observe too. But those angles are how I can add movement to this real quick. There, see that angled line, angled line right there. So now that stream is moving toward me. And then I'll make sure I put shadow in there. Let's, if we've still got it, yeah, it's still wet enough. Let's put color in here. Yeah, let's borrow some of this over here. Get some dark color because that's where it's tumbling down. And we want to see into the water, into what's under the water, where it bends toward me, just like we did when we were doing the waves. So when I have the waves rolling back parallel to my line of vision, I put reflection. But when I have this surface uh, aiming toward me like a window, that's when I start to see into it. I heard one, one person uh, very cleverly describe it as windows and mirrors. We have windows and mirrors. As it tips back parallel to your line of vision, it's more like a mirror. And as it tips toward me, it's more like a window. So this is where I want to see all the color. So let me grab a, a little bit. This is kind of starting to dry up in here. So we'll put some of that red oxide color. It's the color of rust right there. And I'll just put little dots of that. Really all Rusty rocks. Yeah, yeah. This is like the boundary waters. My friend took me up into the boundary waters. Oh, man, what an amazing place. Northern Boundary Minnesota. Waters. Northern Minnesota separates oh, yeah, yeah. the states from Canada. A system of lakes and oh man, it's just so wild and remote. And the fish, they just want you to catch them. I mean, they want to be caught. <laughs> they're, they're just there waiting. Look how I can exaggerate this. I mean, I had one smallmouth bass jump up out of the water and hook itself. Not lying, not lying. It jumped up out of the water hooked itself on a lure that was just dangling over the side of our canoe. Ridiculous. <laughs> they're that they're that excited when you drop something in the water. Not lying. Hey, uh, I want to uh, take this quick opportunity to let you guys all know that uh, we really appreciate the new subscribers from today. And uh, there is a direct relationship between you subscribing and our ability to make more cool stuff for you guys to watch. Right on. That's that's how it happens. Is the more you guys uh, are able to subscribe, the cooler and more frequently of stuff we can put out to you. Sweet. Thanks. Good. Good call, Ben. We're going to put the reflection tumbling down a little more. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to polish something that doesn't need polishing at this point. But 
we're putting reflection color on these surfaces now now this is going to be fun right here I've, I've set it up it's tumbling so this is where after i've set everything up i put the color where it's tipping toward me made it darker and then right here under that is where i can make it shoot now so here's where it's maybe launching out leaving an air pocket under it. and that's what makes that light color i remember just sitting i was at oak creek canyon in arizona a place where we've got lots of fun memories ben and i mm. and made a lot of trouble in that creek yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's a that's a favorite place to ditch school and spend summer, summer days, nice and cool spot in an otherwise hot Arizona. So I'm sitting there just watching the water tumbles, thinking, why is it so bright where it's tumbling over the rocks? And what is this that I'm just trying to figure it out? Finally, it clicked. And I noticed this is the pattern. It's that air pocket under it. And as it bends down, we see less of that. So then I just get that gradient. There it is tumbling down, but I need that gradient because it's a continuous, you know, column of water. I'm gonna grab some, some black to make my shadows. And the smoothness of that gradient really, really helps to, to imagine the curved shape, you know, as it just curves right down into the water. So then the next step is creating the water that it's tumbling down into. Oh, and here's another little tip on the side. You know, because water uh, likes to stick to itself, it will narrow as it falls. So it's pretty normal to see this. Watch, watch how this shape is very believable. If I go like this, okay, then I go from the other side and I go like this. Do you see how that's a very believable shape right there? Because the water likes to stick to itself and become a more evenly distributed, round, narrow column as it's as it's falling. And then I'll make sure I don't lose my nice little highlights. Is that uh, why you're both taking brush strokes down and up? Yeah, just to get the smoothness of the gradient a lot of the time. Sometimes if it's not happening, maybe my brush has a bit too much paint in it and I'm and I'm getting kind of rough edges. I, I'm real big on managing gradients in, in every every painting. So here for instance, you know, I'm gonna go across and try to get some nice gradients coming down like this. But do you see how these gradients, you know, when, when I do this, they're kind of just stopping in the middle and, and they're not especially smooth. So yes, to taper them into the right shapes is a good reason for me to go from the bottom but also it helps me to manage the the continuous flow of my gradients to try both directions i'm constantly just and and i think that that is what drives all of my technique is understanding the look the mechanics of the look i'm trying to achieve and so i'm not i'm not just hoping that a brush stroke will magically deliver a look without having a reason that I think it should. You know, I'm thinking, well, this, I'm going to do this because I, I think if I drag the brush this direction, it'll create that gradient that makes a three-dimensional rounded surface. So here I'm just trying to get that brighter top, making it darker down there. I'll stop there. I just wanted to show you how we can put that triangle shape. I did it a little bit in here, made them skinnier down here, fatter up here, you know, Trying to get that, at least in some spots. It doesn't have to be everywhere. Sometimes I do it and it looks wrong. Water still mystifies me all the time. I, I feel like I understand it and then I see something that blows my mind. And I think I've got a lot to learn. Man. Okay, so then I'll go down here and we'll put, we'll put some water tumbling into there. Now, there's no reason this water can't be a nice turquoise color. Might as well. we got the color right here. I love it. It's my favorite color. I'm going to use the same color I used in that ocean. I'm going to put this down here. And then we're going to add, we're going to add lots of light in here where the white water is beneath. So remember what happens when we have light shining beneath a surface. I'm going to give you a look of this from a different angle. 
real quick too. I'm gonna switch over over here so that you can see a more square view of what I'm talking about. See the layout I'm working toward. Now, on this one, I'm going to uh, put, put some brighter colors in here. That is the white water coming down. But like I was saying, we want color and we want that color moving toward yellow on on this on the you know if you made a rainbow we want to make that blue a little greener where it's brighter if we want it to look like it's under the water shining out that's how we do that trick is is uh by moving the brighter areas a little bit toward yellow the brighter they get so if i take just a touch of this now i'll flip back over where we can zoom in and show you how i'd add just a touch now these colors they don't come out so great on camera but but I, I think that you'll get, I think you'll get the, the basis of what I'm doing here. Just adding a touch of yellow. So is it possible to put too much paint on that canvas? Are you worried about <laughs> yeah. layers of paint? Carpet fire out here is uh, painting over some things and is conscious about how thick the paint is getting. Yeah. Well, my first impression is that maybe there's a reason your username is carpet fire. So yeah, buddy. perhaps you're a little scarred. I'm just saying. <laughs> you're a little sure, bit. Somebody's somebody's been through something. Yeah, yeah. You can you can get too much too much as in it gets really difficult to manage. You know it. Uh, I'm I'm pretty liberally piling it on here because I'm very confident that I'm going to get it where I want it within my dry time within my time frame. But if you're trying to take your time. Uh, and yep. learn it a little bit. Maybe you use a smaller brush. Maybe you use a smaller brush for that so that you're not piling it on quite as heavy. It dries fast, and that's the part that's very forgiving. If this was oil-based, then once you have too much, you're, you're, you're really, in a, really in a pickle there. You know? Well, I don't know. You can pull out a palette knife and just scrape it off the canvas. Okay. So then we're gonna go like this and leave some areas darker wherever we have these little falls. We're gonna put the brighter water shining through so that it looks, you know, real, real bubbly and splashy. Make something look a little more like paradise with that color. Just a little bit toward the green is all it is. Like this. Put that right up in there, bring the dark color in. And I don't have to do anything too fancy with the technique. It's really just blending these colors in to get the brightness, but I can't just use white. If I just use white, you know, it's just kind of a weird look. It looks like the, it looks like a paint, paint, not like water as much. Okay, now. How do you make that, uh that uh, Teresa is asking that sheer yellow green that looks like underwater. I just added yellow. It's that simple. I just added a little bit of yellow to this, but the reason it looks like it's underwater, it's not because of the way I mixed that yellow green. It's because of the dark green I put it next to. So I could move these all over the color chart because this one is moving the, it's, think of this one as being somewhere on the rainbow. This one is closer to yellow on that same rainbow. And that's what causes that look as it gets brighter. And it's every time I get brighter, I also get more toward the yellow. So that could mean that I'm going more from purple to red. Actually, that would be more toward yellow. It could mean that I'm going from actually like a purple to a blue as well. Like if it's a bottle of Gatorade, I like to use that example because that's a pretty rare example. But I've seen it, you know, the the hue shifts because all of the different colors of light, they they don't get filtered at at the same rate, for lack of a better explanation. So you get the color changing as it's as it's getting filtered. So now what I'll do to really bring these things together is I'll add some black or I could just add my colors to of my rocks. So what were my colors? It was this rusty color with some black. It was some yellow. So let's go like this. Let's go. Put that in there. Let's put black and we'll go like this. Uh oh, we got someone trying to get a hold of me there. Is that my phone or is that yours? 
Bye. Yeah. Uh oh. Welcome to trouble. the digital era. I'm in trouble. Okay, we're gonna go like this. Do you mind just hitting the just hit the button on here? It's probably just some advertisement. You know what I do when I get called by uh marketers? Hey Muriel Joe, we heard you're working right now in the middle of a live stream. Would yeah, you yeah. Paid your car insurance? <laughs> exactly. Your warranty is expired. <laughs> oh no, you, you've got a solution. <laughs> yeah. To that made up problem, we can fix it. Okay. So what I do is I just answer it and systematically push one to get through to an operator. And then I just leave it on a counter somewhere. Oh, that's messed up. That is messed because up. Because I get a little bit more peace of mind. No, I I'm a person that just kind of craves a little bit of justice since I can't since I can't get life to be fair. But if I can get just a little touch of the sensation of justice where I'm wasting their time a bit too. They waste mine, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try to waste yours at least a little bit. It's what I have the power to do. I just consider it doing my part. So I just put that on, put that on I mean, one. That's called you know? job security for that, uh, <laughs> that uh, what yeah. do you call that job where they call and try and sell you stuff? Tell a telemarketer. Uh, telemarketer, yeah. that's job security for a telemarketer. Yeah, there you go. Yep. So, you know, the way I emotionally cope with having my time stolen away from me. Yeah. I mean, Baron, he says that, uh, you know, robots should not be allowed to call humans. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, man. We need some laws. We are, our technology is advancing enough. We need some laws about these things. Okay. So now I've got, I've got my colors of the rock so that maybe this is reflection in here. It, it adds a shadow in there, but now I really need to see a cleaner job uh, bringing my water surface up to these splashes. So now I'm going to go, oh, I don't actually need this blue because I've got my pre-mixed watercolor. I forgot that I had that. So here's my watercolor that I used. I'll, I'll use this instead and put this in here. I don't like to do anything that I can't just redo real quick. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to rely on some magical fate for the look that I'm trying to get. So now I'm adding white and a little bit of yellow because it's getting brighter, right in here. And hopefully that'll just mix a, a little bit with that brown. And bring it over here, do the same thing. Bring it in there. Now I want, for the most part, I want pretty level lines under this water because that's what makes it feel like this coming down and hitting like a, a table-like surface. So I'm gonna to try to get some more levelish lines in here. And I'll just let the, the colors now, while this is wet, I'll just let them blend into this darker shadowy color so that it looks like maybe that's stirring up a bit of mud, maybe it's just the shadows, maybe it's just the reflection of the rock, but it's gonna create the effect I need to make this water coming down and hitting a surface. So we're just thinking about perspective making it level. Again, we got little bits of yellow to mix into that underwater color, but only if it's getting brighter, just where I want it to be brighter. So let's, this is a bigger one. Why don't we really, really exaggerate this one and we'll make it flowing. Now here's another little thing I can add in here. I can, I can channel this all kind of to the middle, you know, like there's a current flowing faster here, so all of my all of my underwater bubbles are maybe getting sucked into the middle area. Do so it. Maybe here. We I'm put, excited. So if I just put white, someone might say, "What is that? Is that reflection? What is it? What is that light spot?" But if if I just make it yellow enough, just yellow enough, the goal is to get there enough to make the feel and then stop. So now. When I take my deep water color, pull it in like this, leave it in the middle. Then I want it to look like those bubbles are right in there. And then that sets me up just right to start putting some brighter bits of foam happening. And you know what else I think I should do? I, I think these need just a little bit of, maybe just a touch. What, watch, I think this will look nice to put just a little bit of this color in the base of these, because they are reflective, you know, they'll reflect that color. We'll just put a little bit in here, like this, just near the base, 
See how that kind of pulls the water right up into that like it's a bar of water? Do like that. Level out the bottom. Man, I could do this all day long. Just paint from imagination. It takes me to another place. You know, it's a good feeling. That was really probably what, what uh, made me dream of doing this job more than more than anything. This this career choice was being able to create my my world. You know, that's the part that I think I've enjoyed the most in learning to do it. I'm gonna grab some white now, so we'll just get pure white splashed around over here, so that I can get my brush kind of sharpened. And now I'll make some foam happening. So if it's pushing this way, then I could expect to see, you know, the foam in these slight smile-shaped patterns. You know, uh, very similar to a waterfall. Man, you're gonna love watching that waterfall video. Well, if you're into this, anyway. The you know, the study of the shapes that make things look the way they do. So we have, we have, you know, different little volumes of water pushing forward. And so where you have, you know, one, one section of water pushing forward, the middle pushes faster than the ends. The ends trail behind, the middle pushes forward. So I can create that motion in perspective by adding a slight smile, uh, I'll call it like just a, a default. Everything is just slightly defaulting toward a slight smile shape. So otherwise I'm just making similar kind of foam like I did on my, on my waves, on my ocean scene that I just painted over. But it's with the exception of having this more uniform direction. So I'll put little trails going back and just that general flow of things. Whoa, I almost dropped my brush. You don't want that. You got it. Just that general flow of things like this. Little skinny strands pulling back to other, other shapes. We make it bigger where it's in the middle of the shape. Yep. Go like this. Just slight smile shapes. Now the, the curve of these, you might experiment with, with the shape of these, uh, you know, because the perspective makes a big difference. So just stepping back and saying, okay, okay, do I have my, you do it by feel as well as by knowledge. You know, you step back, if it's curved too much, it might look too 2D. You know, it might look like it's flat on the canvas and like you just have some object piled over it. Don't be discouraged, you know, if you're trying to achieve these things and they don't come together right away for you. A lot of the time, the reason things don't come together is because it's just one thing all by itself and you don't have other things in place next to it to tell the same story. All right, so now I'm coming back here. Notice I'm trying to get more horizontal as I go further back. I'm really making these. So in the same way up here, I get more horizontal as I go back. Hey, what kind here. of brush are you using there, Joe? Ah, just a cut brush. It seems seems so wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> cut brush? Just a cut brush. Like, like, made by for, a, uh, like for trimming out um, your window? Yeah, yeah. If you were making a, you know, it's for doing lines like this. Nice straight line on your window trim. Yeah, there we go. Top of the door, side of the jam. Like that. That's what it's made for. It's not made for this. Yeah, I cut brush. I got so used to using these. Sweet. Um, uh, what do you call that? The uh, oh, I'm having a, a blank. What's that thing with Stonehenge? Sweet Stonehenge. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It kind of is that, isn't it? Yeah, you just oh, whipped out the pie symbol like it's nothing. 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 Yeah. Well, I had to show what this brush can do. That's what this thing's capable of, man. You just, these purdies, they get down. They, they mean business. They make them work for you. They make straight edges. That's what they're That's for. Right, purdy, purdy. If you want a Mural Joe branded brush, you know who to call. <laughs> yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> I've been using them all this time. I never received a penny. 
Okay. Not even a free brush, really. You know, I'm a little yeah. bit sad about that. If I was good at marketing, I'd have had that one in the bag by now. But I'm not. Uh, you'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Okay. 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 Now I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. See this one? This one's kind of been complete. So we're going to bring that down like this. There we go. Get everything kind of at the same plane like that. Now we're talking. Let's put a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to be done with this in just a minute here. We're going to go. We're going to go like this and really enhance the foaming up effect now. Yellow, green. We're in uh, my brother's bike shop, so you'll hear background noise here and there. We got people going in and out downstairs doing things. So it's just entertainment for the day if something crazy happens. It's good ambiance. Yeah, yeah. You never know. You might hear a refrigerator kick on <laughs> the sounds of everyday life. You know, nothing makes me want to paint water <laughs> like the sounds of refrigeration. Yeah. So here I'm using a little bit different brush stroke, kind of curving up and down. I'm making these these swooping shapes. My my shapes in order to try to create a more piled up boiling look are just are just more curved. That's all it is. Just trying to go. Oh, that's a lot of yellow. We better put some blue. A good remedy for too much paint is more paint. Just got to get the ratio. <laughs> put more on there. Okay, this is just boiling up. I'm just making these curved shapes. And this is kind of an impressionistic approach to, to a particular look. Like that. There we go. Let's get that. Yeah, I'm just getting more in there until I get the right color balance. That's what I'm after. You know, I just want the balance of it. Okay. Grab this, make it brighter in the middle where it's kind of flowing together. Getting that foam. And maybe we have, I think it'd be cool to see just a touch of reflection. Just kind of do an impression of it. We'll grab, grab a few of these spots and I'll take the same color I used on this reflection and just, just put a few little little tiny bits of it just on these boiling piles of water. I like to call them piles. Somehow that became the easy way for me to think about everything that I was looking at is in piles. I think of everything as a pile and where it's going and what's happening to all the little parts of it as it's piling up and spreading out. All right, there we go. That's something. I feel like this would be more interesting if I if 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 I staggered this a bit more. So you know, maybe maybe that's something for the future. So maybe make these maybe not all at the exact same height. That might be cool. Yeah, let's just do it now. That's what I'll do. We'll go like this. Let's put some in here. Let's bring this down and add some perspective. Let's do the same thing with these falling cascading rocks like that. Okay, and then we'll put our put our rock color in there, black, yellow, brown. What kind of a yellow are you using there for the uh, contrast? We got uh, Clarissa from Panama. Yeah, well, is. this one comes from a company called Sherwin Williams, and it says vivid yellow. I would just describe it as a very bright yellow. You know, if you just think of a yellow that doesn't really look like any other color and is very bright, then... It works great. I've used a lot of different kinds of yellows and they all do the job. I've never gotten a yellow that failed to, to serve this purpose well. So I wouldn't get too worried about getting the right yellow. But getting your favorite yellow is valuable. You know, you, you do end up with some that you're like, oh man, that one just immediately popped. That was really good. So it's worth experimenting. And doing man, Sherpa, Sherpa is ready to throw on a swimsuit and jump on in that water. All right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's what I, that's what I paint for because I just love that. I love that feeling of like, oh yeah, I'm making it. I'm making this world. Feels like I go in there. You know, it, it just takes my mind there for a while. Boy, I'm telling you though, I didn't want to jump in the water where I just went in Florida. Those gators scare me a little bit. As they should. <laughs> yeah. Well, supposedly they're not as dangerous. Have you seen their teeth? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But the locals, they say, you know, my friend, he's like, dude, they're not, they're not dangerous like everybody says. They just run from people. 
He says, if you feed them, that's, that's when they get dangerous as if they've been fed. And then I'm thinking, who in the world feeds them? But he said, you can actually just throw them bread. They eat it like ducks, which I thought was really interesting. I had no idea that that was the case. Anyway. Do you know if uh, oil paint comes in these cans or is it uh, only available in tubes? And Oh, you can get oil paints in cans for sure. Yeah. Uh, oil paint in the can, while it does have a nice slow dry time, is, in my opinion, a real hassle to work with because it gets so sticky. So in the same way that you'll experience a, a half dry state with your... You'll, ex you'll experience the paint being halfway dry where it gets real sticky. Well, with the water-based paint, that doesn't last long. But with oil-based paint, it lasts long. In the can, specifically talking about oil in the can. If you're doing artist oils, it takes a day or two for it to get there. But in the can, you're painting along, and then you've got paint that's like just, like it's, it's mud. You know, it, it's hard to move it around. It gets harder to blend it. For that reason, I don't love working with it, but it does give you some more time. Definitely gives you time. And if you're just looking for time to learn, then you do what you got to do. You know, I'm not against, not against any, any method because people are different. You got to take things at our own pace. All right, I'm going to put some more shadows in here. So these shadows are where I'm not going to put the reflection. I want high contrast. Like this. Now here's something up in here. Here's here's a good trick that you can use if you want to make rocks look really wet. And this was a good this was a good question that came up earlier this week too. Someone said, "How can I get that reflective over the rocks look? Reflective water piling over the rocks look." Well, when I'm up in here, watch this color that I use. I'm going to take uh, blue. I'm going to put it in here, and then I'm going to take red put it in with it. Same trick as the others. I'm using purple. And that purple is going to be real, real high contrast because it's dark. It's nice and dark. But it's going to look like reflections because of the, the high contrast. Because of the color and the high contrast. So adding that, that blue and red into some of these. Maybe I leave it off of my my closest, darkest shadows, but anywhere I want to have, anywhere that I want it to look wet, you know? The only reason I added a touch of white to it just now is because I want to see it, just light enough to see it. So here, let's put some in here. Let's put some in here. Carpet Fire here. is curious if you could get that same brown if you were painting with some coffee. You ever tried that? <laughs> Maybe watercolor. Maybe if you're doing a watercolor painting. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Like or you could put a bunch of flour maybe and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it never did a very nice job of painting my shirt. I would say that. It uh it just looks like I'm sloppy. <laughs> That's all it looks like whenever I do the copy. There, see that? See that purple in there? That is a way to make this all just instantly look more watery. By adding that a little bit. Okay, so now let's build the stream up a little higher. I want to take this back and back. So we want to start seeing more reflection. Now, in, at this point in the picture, getting up here close to the horizon, I can get real loose. I can get real messy with the technique. Because all I'll do is, is uh, use the colors that create these things. And, and wherever they land, I'm just going to run with the kind of shape that it's starting to already create. So I'm gonna put the, that's a powerful pigment. I really could have used less of that one. As I'm talking about just being free and painting, I'm like, oh, maybe not that much. <laughs> I I'm mean, a, is there such a thing as too much liberation in your painting? Yeah, when money's involved, then there is. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, I get hired to do things. And uh, not too many people want to see a whole ton of freedom finding its way into their pocketbook. <laughs> yeah, like your like your customers are thinking that's cool that you're creative and all, but uh, you just redid that three times and I paid for it. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah plan canvas, based. Canvas work versus contracting work, you know. That's it. That's what it is. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm, I'm just in here making some colors and it's black and it's rust. It's that rusty color. Red oxide is what I like to call it. And then I'll put some highlights wherever I already have that light color. I'm not going to put it on the black, although I'll show you a cool trick that you can do with that by putting the yellow on the black. So after I do this, we'll put some highlights and get some rocks. So we just need a landscape here. All right, I like that. Now I'm going to put some grass in here. Look, yellow and black, all you ever need. To do, uh, to do foliage in a landscape, yellow and black, we'll get it every time. Now, of course I use other things, but it's just fun that whenever I want to, I can just use yellow and black. Do that, get some, get some green going. Here, let's make some smaller, smaller blades of grass in there. Let's come over here, wherever I've got the black. This yellow will mix with it. And this is where it's really helpful to have a yellow that's on the transparent side. Because this yellow is a lot more transparent, it, it seems to have this green effect more. The black gets real green when it hits this particular kind of yellow. I feel like transparent paints change color way more than, than high coverage paints when they mix. You know, maybe, maybe. Not, not completely I'm sure about that. All right, so now we got a little bit of grass on the bank. We can even put a few little highlights in there here. Let's let's put a few little make it coming down this way. Maybe it bends over a little bit. Mm, that sounded like a V8 with uh, aftermarket yeah. exhaust. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering <laughs> wondering how that came through. Might as well be out there on the sidewalk. There, now we got some grass. You know, just a little bit of yellow in the black. And then I'll take the white and get to the tops of my rocks. So wherever I have this yellow, that's not complete. We want the white on that to complete the highlights. We need the combination of colors. So and Martha is asking if uh, when you're doing rocks, do you need your edges to be sharp or no. can they be? No, be creative and try different things. I, a sharp edge is a quick and easy thing with a big brush like this filled with wet paint. So doing these particular kinds of, of rocks. I would say the uh, more extremely different you make the light and shadow is going to make the rocks look, uh, influence the shape of them. You know, you can actually make the, how far an edge turns, you can suggest that with how different you make the colors. So if I just make these, I don't, I don't know if it's too easy to see in here, so this surface here is real light. So it looks like this rock just goes straight back and then it looks like it drops straight down because we go dark than light. So we got a tabletop. In here, this is not as different. And if I add to that, it's not as different in color either. Okay, let's do this. So here, let's grab some of this color. There, now see that edge? Now we've got a rock that goes up and then bends a little bit and then it bends a little bit more. You see what I'm saying? So how how far I take the color probably has a greater influence than the exact uh, way I make the edges. So you can get like a rough rock, smooth rocks, depending on the shapes you use. But I would say value. The contrast and the light, lightness and darkness is probably the biggest influence in that. But... Everything I say, I end up finding exceptions to it later. So feel free to edit edit those claims on your own. <laughs> you go out and you test them. You're like, you know, Real Joe, he, he's all right. Yeah, Not well, everything while you're, he said is spot on. <laughs> while you're taking a stab in the dark, uh, Offer wants to know, uh, if you had to put a dolphin in there, where, would, where might it go? <laughs> Swimming up the stream like a salmon, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we can make him enjoy a little pool. That's how I do it. You want to do it often? I'm crazy enough to take that challenge. Here, what I'm going to do first 
What I'm going to do first is put some water on top of this. We're going to go like this. Surface of water is going to go up in here. I'm going to keep all my strokes nice and level. And I got to maintain my underwater color too. I, I ran out of my brown, so let me just mix, mix some of it real quick. Black, red, yellow. That's my, that's my color. So we're going to go in here and keep some of that in the water, like this is flowing over these rocks, right? And as long as I keep my strokes real consistent, since water is, is flowing together the same direction, I want to be careful not to, not to change the angle too much, you know, from one shape to the, to the next. I want to make sure that I keep the, the direction consistent. Here, let's go like this. I just think it'd be fun to put some of this turquoise in here. Just little bits for fun. You know, like there's some of that, some of that turquoise water in there. All right, then we'll put this reflection color going back, back. Let's put it going in here. Wherever I make these lines, it's just going to chop off the rocks and turn it into water. Let's go like this. Like this, we'll put some here. Let's put some in here. I'm just deciding, you know, my last touch is on where this water is, where it's coming from. Put some in here again, maybe tidy up that spot a little bit. See, and if I go, if I go color right here, or uh, reflection right here, see how this goes reflection, and then it has color, then reflection. Look how that makes a drop off. Reflection, color, reflection. Then we have this kind of in these steps. And then if we want to put those little cascading falls, we can do them tiny too. Just like that. You see it, you know, and the viewer will definitely, it pays off. It's not for nothing. You know, you can pick that out. What about a dragonfly, Joe? You got maybe room for a dragonfly in there? Let's do it. Let's do a dragonfly. Oh, we're going to have to stop the list of dragonfly plus dolphin though. That's true. I, yeah. I mean, there's also some Loch Ness monster requests out there. And uh, oh man, I just want to please everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would like to. All right. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Hey, but Loch you know, on, on Joe's YouTube channel, he's got some pretty sweet paintings uh, where he does bugs and butterflies and all sorts of things, especially in his playlists. If you check his playlist. Oh, thanks. Good call. That's it. So everywhere I put these lines, I'm putting, because I'm using the reflection color, it can create new rocks. I can actually add rocks into the scene. Watch, there's no rock here. Now there's a rock, just like that. There's a rock there, like that. You just need that reflection color. Let's put a big splash in here too. Okay, let's make this one of the last things. Who knows why it's there, where it's coming from. But let's just do it here. Turquoise, we want it getting brighter. Watch this. Brighter as it goes out. Like this. And then we're going to get... We're going to get the white. That's a little bit on the muddy green side, but maybe it's just muddy water. And then we'll start putting drops, piling forward in here. Like this. Like this. So uh, Kimberly is wondering, do you condition your brushes before you start? Uh, and how do you keep your brushes from drying out while using them? When yeah, right. Take a long time. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. My brother's here. That's who you hear in the background. We got my brother that owns the shop. James, if you say hi, everybody can hear you on the live stream. Hello, everybody. He's back there that's making James. If you wondered what the, all that crack one is, that's yeah. cereal. It's breakfast time. <laughs> yeah, he's breakfast driving up. Mural Joe Land. Yeah, yeah. We got to let the bike shop be a bike shop for a little bit. Okay, so to try to make this look like a splash, what I'm doing is wherever it's brighter, I start shifting it, shifting it toward the green. Like uh, did you talk about your brush, Joe? How do you keep your brush uh, from drying out? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, it does dry out. And when that happens, I just rinse it. 
you know, uh, because even if I, you know, once, once it starts drying, it, it kind of goobers up and it'll speed dry any paint that hits it from there, you know, so I do have to, I do have to just rinse it out every once in a while, but when I'm moving quick like this, I end up not needing to. All right, so in here I'm trying to make a big splash. Now we just need some reflection color because it's water. So if I put a little bit of this in here, here, let's maybe make it going like this. Reflection color right up in here. Just try to set the stage. Then we'll put some splashing in here. Just get some of that blue. And you get a little bit of that blue in there. Hopefully that'll make this look real splashy. Big old splash coming up on the other side of a rock maybe. And I think a rock would look good too. So here, let's grab the black and let's go like this. And then if I just make that color gradually get darker as it goes down toward that rock, like this. And what's really gonna make that look like a rock is if I put just a little bit of the color on it, because it'll be consistent with the rest of the, of the painting. So let's grab some of this brown here, grab some of that yellow, like this, just get our rock color and just go right in there. And we got our little rock underneath this water. And if we put just a touch of white, we can make it like it's up there in the shadow, you know, kind of getting piled over by some water. My water could use some help though. I'm not super happy with the water. One thing we need in this is a background that's dark enough. So real quick, just add some, add some background a little higher, like we got some trees or something. I think this will be good. Do this. We'll take a little bit of red, just like we did before. Put some white in there. A distant background. There we go. Nice and gray blue. I just use the red to take out the take out the green. If if I've got a background that's in the shower, in the shower. <laughs> that was uh, a good what? <laughs> shadow. <laughs> I got a background that's in a shadow and I want to use that, that purple hue to get that shadow. So I'm going to take this purple and just build a background. I added just a bit more turquoise because it's heavy on the purple. So we'll take this in here and having that dark background will help my, hopefully it'll help my watery splash to look more like a watery splash. Just go like this, get rid of our miniature stone, Stonehenge right there. Your pie symbol. Yeah, the pie. I just whipped that out. Boy, he can't do a lot, but man, can he do that pie symbol. Hey, uh, so uh, we've got Henry who is curious, what are your thoughts on Bob Ross and specifically his mountain paintings? A lot of them. I think that... Uh, he learned a very important thing that people want to have a good time when they're painting. A lot of people are just trying to have a good time and be creative and get that joy. So, you know, hence the name, the joy of painting. So techniques that deliver a good looking thing fast were a lot more valuable than techniques that delivered a super realistic, amazing thing uh, in, in a slower amount of time. Palette knife that looks like a mountain with one swipe. It was like magic, you know, and, and it was in the moment. It, was, it, it felt so good to be able to just see a mountain in such a satisfying short time. I want to see a mountain. Boom, there's a mountain. Felt good. He really dialed into the essence of what things are without needing to dig into the into the tiny details of, of what things are, you know? Okay. I'm going to take my background down like this. We're going to say that these are trees up in here. 
like that. Let's get a little bit more, then we'll be done with that background. That'll be our scene. Time so to uh, to Offer is, uh, is curious specifically what kind of brush you got there. You know, we talked about it's a cut brush, but I think he wants to go out and buy that brush. Yeah, pretty. It's a one inch. I wore off the label. It's made by a made by a company uh, called Purdy, and there are others like it. You know, there's a company called Wooster that makes it, but I like the brand uh, Purdy. I I just genuinely like better. Like I said, they don't give me any money. So, if you wanted to get this exact one, I always look for the ones that you know they have ratings on how stiff the bristles are. I look for the ones that say rigid on the the ones that have more strength in the bristles. I don't like the real floppy ones, but I don't even think they make brushes that are that floppy. So you're doing some background now or is yep, that yep, like just huge, throwing in. Is that a huge purple tidal wave coming in? or what Just the background, just the background, because here was the problem. I wanted to do this big splash coming over the rocks, Yeah. but I just didn't have contrast in my picture to show it. It looks like a dark blobby bush or something, you know? And so, Here's something that, that you run into a lot is, is you uh, feel like you're going through the right steps to create some. You you put it on, and it, it doesn't look like it. Well, usually the reason for that is, is something to the effect of just not having the stage set. You don't have the right comparisons in place. Maybe there is no perfect color that would create that effect at this point. Uh, what it really just needs is a, a pattern in place in order for it to look right. So in order for it to look like it's glowing, I needed to see a dark background instead of having to overlap lap the white. So I said, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead, put some trees in here. So that's what I'm in the process of doing is just building a real quick background. I'm gonna just dab this with some yellow and white. Just Do you work with uh, pigments a lot? Tatiana is curious. She's oh, seen okay, in yeah, your, right. uh, previous videos that you maybe incorporate pigments from time to yeah, time. Yeah, I've used pigments all by themselves. In, and when I'm working wet on wet, where I'm, where I'm just blending lots of wet colors, I can just throw some pigment in there. Like I need to do a slight adjustment. Pigment is a super fast way to adjust a color. So you don't always need a, a, a gallon of paint sitting next to you if you want to just use it as an adjuster like I use my red I could actually just use red pigment and just dab the brush in it and accomplish the same so yeah I, I do that it's a good trick pigments you know it's something you can buy separate people that do specialty wall finishes mix their own colors they might keep pigments around you know might be something that you find in art stores that that uh have products for doing specialty finishes, plasters, things that are not just the typical paint job. Sometimes you can just ask a paint store if they'll put some pigment in a container for you and they'll do it. They'll just shoot it out of their machine. They, they gotta be in a nice mood though. What, does it make yeah. a similar noise to when you're painting waves, when it shoots out of the machine? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Everything makes a sound. Sound in motion, man. I'm telling hey, you. Hey, uh, can I get some of that <laughs> in that gallon? Yeah, of can blue? you just give me a quick little, just a quick little whoosh, just right in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I have to be in the moment. I feel like I don't do a good job with the sound unless I'm really there and it's happening because it's a feeling, it's an intuitive feeling about what the sound is. Yeah, they might not like it if you were so into their paint mixing that you're just like all up in it, like, yeah, give me some of that, some of that. Yeah. A weird, I think that would weird them out. Yeah. This guy. Be the name of your YouTube channel. Yeah. 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 How, how do you spell it? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. uh, sir, can you uh, go back to the other side of the counter, please? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Hey, when, so you're painting, when you're painting a sunset, how do you make the clouds look dense? or uh, light inversely, or uh, and this is completely off topic, I realize, but uh, yeah, Henry's no, no, we can talk about that while we're painting water. No problem. Yeah, what is it? Say it again. I didn't quite understand that question. Yeah, so he's, he's, Henry's trying to figure out uh, giving clouds definition, basically. So what makes clouds look dense or light or interlaced, right. piled up? Color. 
So the short answer is getting the right color. And that is why I've gone to such lengths to talk about cloud colors. Yeah, MiraJoe.com, mm -hmm. he's got it. <clears throat> yes. lengthy tutorials and explanations on how to get that magic cloud look. Yes. Like for sure. And it's and it's like many other things. If if you dedicate yourself to understanding how dark or how light and what color it is, and uh, or let's say how dark or how light and and where it is, what hue it is, where it is on on a on a spectrum. Because maybe the intensity of the color is pro not not as much of an effect as the darkness, the lightness, and then and then the hue where it is. It those create very different appearances with clouds, cause us to assume different things about how deep they are or how big they are. So, so that's the so short here, answer. Here's here's one closer to the painting you're working on. Um, a B. That's the name, A B. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> nice. Would uh, like to know if you're doing the uh, trees, like maybe on that horizon in the back or along the edge, uh, those rocks. How do you uh, make the trees look as though they are along that edge? We're gonna make the trees look like they're along the the edge. Now, say what edge you're talking about. They're going to be along again, so that I can. Yeah. Track uh, track exactly what you're what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, so it it sounds like uh, a bee is trying to get the trees to look as though they are trees, so upright and along the edge, basically creating trees on a distant horizon. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, uh, as long as as long as you get that atmosphere color in there, then the next thing to get in there is that that violet for distant trees. And then the closer I want them to be, the less I'm going to use that. And so you would get that color and then just get the size to match it. Okay, so now I got pure white. I think I just had so much of that deep yellow in here. It just wasn't looking that watery. But now I'm starting to feel like I'm getting somewhere with my splash of water. Like we've got a little bit of a maybe like a flash flood or something tumbling over this. And then we're going to take this color, splash it up in here like this. There we go. And where we want the light shining through that, see how it's just a bit more turquoise, a bit more turquoise. It's got it moves toward yellow on the rainbow to get that. And it's going to flow down here. We'll do another one. We'll do another one in here. Just little. This one won't be big. And put this. Like maybe it's a couple little, couple little streams are running together right there and causing the water to splash up or something. Like this. We'll bring it up onto the rocks a little. Like that. Add a touch of yellow. Let's get just a touch of yellow in that in that splash to get that look right in here. Because if I go too extreme, then it, it looks like something else, like grass or something. Get it right in there. Okay, then we just need our reflection color. I'm gonna get the turquoise out. We don't want turquoise in the reflection color. Right in here right there reflection on the side of the rocks instead of the turquoise right here okay so now those trees those trees that you're talking about if we wanted some trees that are in that middle ground they're just going to be right on this ridge let's mix a color off to the side first go like this yellow black that's that's tree right there, yellow and black. Now maybe these aren't distant enough that I even need to add purple. Maybe I can just add white to this. We want them just to have, you know, more color than the furthest ones, less color than what what the yellow and black. For close close trees, I might just use yellow and black. So here I'm mixing black, yellow, and then white to make it just lighter and grayer. That's all. Okay, let's see what this looks like with just these. Now, because I've got this stage set, this should look pretty good. 
We're going to go tree right here. We're going to do a little bit of Bob Ross right here. Jiggle that canvas around a little bit. Bring that in here. Maybe we'll put put a lighter, lighter version of it here if we add some atmosphere to it. We might make a slightly further ridge right here. And the darker I get, the closer I get to the original yellow and black mix, the more that that's probably going to look like it's closer. So we can just put a ridge of trees here, and then we can put closer ones with our darker mix. Here's the darker mix. We go, you know, right in, right in here. Let's do a darker one. Here's a tree that's a bit closer. So you see, I'm just trying to make the scale of it look believable at the same time, just choosing the size. But but probably the maybe the scale really is very minimal, not 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 of much consequence. Probably the greater influence is just dialing in that color. Yeah, Teresa is noticing that in your waves, uh, you don't just have pure white there. You've got kind of a gradient from the dark to the white. Uh, what's your thinking behind using a gradient versus just like hard contrasting white? Yeah, well, well, and now when you say wives, you waves, you're talking about, I said wives. <laughs> Man. Eh, different conversation. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about waves. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, when it went to white, oh, too, suddenly, I this is what feels like a body of water getting brighter as it moves into the light, the seeing in gradients. So if it's all just sudden, it, it just feels like there's a lot of hard edges. And so we're imagining a different kind of object. But when I see gradual change from the deep blue to the yellow or greener blue as it gets brighter, that gradual uh, change is real important. I don't think it means that it always has to be that gradual change, but I need to have it present. It needs to exist somewhere so that you can, so that you can, you know, it can tell, send, send the message. You know, so here I just mixed yellow, more yellow into my already existing tree color. And I'm just doing these little do, 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 just dabbing them in there. Da, 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 right there. And then we just get the darker color, a little more shadow on the base. I mean, who even cares the shape of the trees? If they look, if it looks like a fun place to go. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what I care about. So now, hey, what are your what are your thoughts on uh, digital media, digital painting? <clears throat> is that something that you have any experience with? Uh, I, I have a little bit of experience just just from having fun doodling. I I mess around. Just take take a second here <clears throat> and uh, grab a, a quick glass of water so I can tell. Them. I have a little bit of experience with Inkscape. Uh, no, not Inkscape. I, I do like to use Inkscape, but I meant to say with a program called procreate there's a lot there's a lot of good programs out there you know <clears throat> and i think that they are phenomenal training if if you can get a hold of a program if nothing else just just to learn and have fun because you can see these things that i talk about working in real time you know you're gonna watch uh light mix instead of paint mix so that when I'm talking about things like, well, when you mix blue light with something, it goes a little bit purple. Well, you're going to see that exact thing happen when you pull out a white and start blending it with a blue color in a digital, on a digital canvas. And so it makes it all just, it's, it's like really good real time training. It all just comes together for you. Here, I, I uh, want to make reflections of these trees on these rocks. I thought that'd be cool, but then I remembered, you know, if the rock's tipping, and then I want to see those reflections tipping too. So I'm going to go like this. Like this. I love digital, digital art, digital canvas. It's such a good way to learn. Well, and for and for some, it's an awesome career. You know, it, it turns into some amazing, amazing work. See here, we just put a little bit of reflection in between these. Then we got like the little, little treesies coming down. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. <clears throat> so, if I wanted to make a dragonfly, sure. If I wanted to make a dragonfly, here, let's put them 
Or let's put him kind of flying through here. We'll go like this. Like this. Let's put some black. Let's just put a background on it first. Throw in some yellow. Put in some of our red colors so that it doesn't turn green. We just want some rocks in here. Like this. Let's finish up our scene. Let's go like this with yellow. Let's put some bright white. Like this. There we go. I'm going to put the white where I have the color. I always want to see color. You know, if I want it to look like an object going in or out of a shadow, when I add light, I want to see color. That's something that paint has a problem with. When you lighten it, you lose color. When you darken it, you lose color. So you always want to make a real colorful spot wherever you want to darken or lighten something. Okay. So now we'll put a, a dragonfly in there. And this is what I'm thinking is that we just make the wing. All right. I've never actually painted a dragonfly. So this is going to be somewhat of an imaginary version. <laughs> Prepare to laugh at me. Okay. Oh, we're prepared. We are yeah. prepared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think people like to see when someone does well at their craft, it can be refreshing to see them fail. Okay. We're going to do a wing. Like that. Okay. We're going to do another wing. I'm not making a small dragonfly. I'm not going to do that. Okay. And then we're going to do the back wing. Behind that, right here, one, two, one, two, right here. Okay, and then to make the veins and the wings, I'm just having this idea. I'm gonna borrow this light color. And I'm gonna push the, I'm gonna push the black apart with the light color in order to get the look of veins and the wings. like this, there we go. Make the light shining through those. Maybe they should be like, you know, just a little bit iridescent. I think that'd be cool too. Here, let's add, let's add a little bit of a red. I don't even know how to do that. Let's add some pink, a little bit of pink iridescence to it. Like that, and then maybe a tiny bit of of yellow too. Like that. I don't have green. I don't have my nice bright green with me. It's kind of fun seeing the colors in there. All right. Now here's a trick when you don't really feel super confident about painting something, which I don't, not this. Do a minimal job, let imagination fill in as much as possible. You know, so I'm not going to come in here and start painting veins in these wings that I don't even know how to place. Because if I just make the feel of light coming through the wings, maybe I can rely on the viewer's imagination to fill in the rest. All right now, let's put a abdomen going back like this. And let's make like a maybe kind of a bright green on the body. Like that, let's get yellow and that turquoise color and I'll get some, well here, before I get white, I'll just put the green in. Right here, okay, and then I'm gonna get white and get a brighter green because I want some light hitting this. If I get a little bit of light on here, maybe I can, there. Little bit of light there. Then we just need two eyes, right? Let's do red ones. Okay, and then black face. Boom, right? <laughs> That's it. So we. That's my dragonfly. I'm gonna round this. 
make it more round. My best attempt. It's my best attempt at a dragonfly. Yeah, we're feeling that dragonfly out here. All right, all right. Now, if I don't try too hard, people are going to be very forgiving, you know. If, if you just leave a lot to imagination and, and just kind of try to get the mood of it real quick, you know, I feel like that's a good strategy in painting. But as soon as you go in, like I'm doing right this second, as soon as you go in and you start trying to hyper-perfect things, you know, the more it starts to gradually look like it should be hyper-perfected. And so you're changing the expectations of your picture. So you want to be careful not to go beyond. I mean, you can stay within your ability level on that and and give people a real enjoyable piece of art by, by just keeping it. I love reading children's books. I love the artwork that's in simple illustrations that kids the kids uh, quick, quickly interpret and understand. You know, I always enjoy that. I never feel like something needs to be super detailed. All right, we got our dragonfly. All right, I feel like we need a dolphin now. All right, let's go down here and put a, put a dolphin. Of course, we only have room for the head. So we're just gonna go like this. This is a, uh, a, salmon, uh, <clears throat> a salmon and a dolphin fell in love and then this thing was made here. In well. <laughs> freshwater river <laughs> <laughs> that is weird <laughs> okay well you know because it's not really an ocean right where dolphins are right? it's like yeah it's well a moment ago we water. were on the on the beach so we could just say that we are now at at a little stream that flows into the ocean and this dolphin's just having a good there are river dolphins oh so totally. you know i can i can try to make it make sense yeah. i'm gonna put him right down totally. here popping his head out of the water i'm gonna use this round shape like this, he's gonna pop up like this. He's gonna look toward us a little bit. Like this. Okay. And then we're gonna put, you know, I'm gonna start just by getting a, I'm just gonna use black and white for my light and shadow color. Cause I have to try to get the shape. I'm trying to remember exactly the shape of a dolphin snout. All right. There's a signature shape, and I've I've painted on a, a couple times, so I've had practice. So I do have a reason for you to expect me to do a little better on this one. Okay, let's go like this. Put a little smile. Yeah, dolphins, dolphins make an appearance in episode three. You guys coming out uh, shortly, so be sure to subscribe to this channel. And if uh, you really want to help us out with making more cool stuff then go to muraljoe.com and become a member. That is the best way to make sure that stuff like this keeps happening and keeps getting better. Yeah, all right, cool, thanks, Ben. Very good, okay. We almost got him, we almost got him. This dolphin, he's gonna be here in a second. He's coming. Well, that's a happy little guy, isn't it? Well, dude, when is a dolphin not happy? Come on, no, don't answer that, yeah. I don't wanna hear it. No, they're happy, yeah. 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 Yeah, they're happy creatures here. And then we're going to go dunk right there. That's his eye. And then we get white. Let's get a little bit of a reflection on the nose. A little bit it's of. Kind of like the dolphins kind of hanging out with that dragonfly, if you ask me. That's it. They're buddies. This is the story about the dolphin and the dragonfly. Yeah, yeah that's it. One's flipper, one's flopper. Flip it. Flip it, Brian, the cameraman. Nice, nice. Well done. <laughs> okay, we're going to put a round chin like that. Put it on there. We just got little suggestions of some light and shadow in there. All right, now a little more bright white right here on the nose. Junk. Junk, junk, right there. See those three dots? Nose, chin, head, and I think he needs a little on his eye because they have kind of a, a brow that sticks out. So we'll go like that. Okay, so we're uh, 
uh, at about an hour and 45 here, guys out there. So we're going to uh, probably be wrapping up soon, but definitely get on this chat and shoot your questions out. I know you're all over oh, yeah. the planet right now. All right. Cool, man. Pakistan, we got stuff from uh, nice. Panama. You know, I see you guys. Exciting. Out there, so Exciting. Don't be shy. Right. Ask your questions. You got Joe's ear right now. That's and it. Now it's That's it. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, and me too. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time to watch. Your time is important, you know, and it's a real big honor that you choose to spend it here. I love it. I love it. And uh, makes my job a thrill. I, I could die happy today. You know that? I really could because I got to share the thing that I love about life with a lot of people willing to take the time to watch. And it's, it's been just a big privilege, you know. Like a little kid that finally gets a moment to show off for his friends and family. My, my life has been that, and it's been such a fun thing. So this is Water in Motion we've been doing. And I want you to consider being a member at my site. I mentioned this earlier on in this show. Something that I never stop studying is the, the things that make things look the way they do. Why do things look the way they do? Why do we know what something is so fast when we see it? How can I use that to create my own things? That's what I'm constantly updating. I'm constantly posting things. If you want to be a member on my site, we're doing a startup promotion too where you can get in there for a cheaper price. And like I said, it's also commitment free. You can subscribe when you want to paint something and just stay subscribed for that long which I, I think is a, a perfectly fine plan. That link is in the chat, you guys. You can click it, check it out right now. Notice my shapes as I'm going here. You see, I've got my I, I'm just subtle directions. As I'm making these, I'm making this diagonal flow, choop, 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 flowing this way because I want the motion of this water coming down like that. So I'm just thinking about that perspective. <laughs> got the little dolphin. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like the dolphin. Great idea. Whoever said dolphin, good idea. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to put a little bit of color in my pools. I feel like there could be a, a bigger pool right up in here. Why don't we do that? Let's add, add a touch of white to it so that we can see that color. And just sh string it across here. Yeah. Get a more tropical looking body of water. And if it's real reflective, it might might be on the light side, but I'm not going to lose my dark strip. I want to keep that dark strip. That's where it's flowing over. So when you get further and further away from you, you got to think about making your lines more and more flat, more horizontal, or rather along the surface, really stretching out those lines. Let's go like that. Just putting some finishing touches on my scene here. We started with a sandy, sandy shore with nothing much in the picture. Now this is where we are. This has been a pretty fun evolution of a picture, huh? <laughs> Just letting it turn from one thing to another. Go like that. Maybe just a little bit of reflection in there. Watch this, we'll put a tiny bit of reflection Right in here under these rocks. Hey, while you're doing that reflection, Tatiana has an interesting question for you. Uh, she's okay, about that? to paint a mural for a business, and the contractors uh, have not yet painted the walls. Should she ask them to paint the walls with uh, the white paint, or what would you suggest? Well, my favorite is a light gray, but it really is just a personal preference. By the time you cover it with this kind of, if, if you do a lot of color mixing as you go, you know, you end up covering it all up. But a light gray uh, is, uh, will be concealed a lot more quickly. Uh, it's a hard color to see through other colors. And so that tends to be my preference. If I'm priming a, priming a wall, priming a canvas to be painted with with most colors, I'll do a gray instead of a white, just so that if I have one little, little tiny, so not that I ever miss spots when people hire me to do jobs, but 
if it were to hypothetically happen, I would want it to be a light gray spot, not a white one. So if it's the gray, just uh, uh, drywall, would you still paint gray wall, drywall gray, or would you just leave the gray drywall and paint right on that? I would, um, I, I would definitely put a coat of paint on dry. If you're talking about raw drywall, yeah, I, I would put a coat of paint on it and let it dry for a, for a day or two. You know, I wouldn't try to go same day. So keep this in mind that when you put a coat of paint on something that that's an active chemical that speeds drying. And so you've got uh, super, super fast dry time if you're trying to paint same day, even if it's dry to the touch. For instance, if I start painting on these, I felt it just now doing, doing the little blue, little blue strip of my pools of water in there. Uh, super quick drying because the chemicals that dry the first coat are still active, they instantly activate the drying. Yeah, I don't know how it works, it just does, it, that's what it does, you know? So you'll find it very annoying how quick your paint is drying and making your brush skip. Man, I don't, I don't know what in the world I'm gonna do with this painting now, it's gonna go in the pile. It's got a ripped canvas. If anybody wants to buy this, if you wanna buy this, I'm gonna tell you something. Maybe I shouldn't do this, but if you just throw me a couple hundred bucks, cover the shipping, <laughs> I'll send this to you. <laughs> it's a memory. It's got a hole in the canvas. It's unfinished. I'm going to throw in some colors and be done. Or you could sponsor <laughs> the next episode of uh, The Adventure of Painting with uh, Mural yeah. Joe. That would probably be a good idea. I like that. Yeah. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, here's the problem. These paintings just keep piling up. I just have this stack of paintings because I just want to show people how things work. I have to get this out of here. And so I, I really just don't even want it to sit around trying to get any money out of it. I just want it to go away. So look, just contact me. If you want the picture, just contact me. That's what I'm saying. Hey, if you were doing storm <clears throat> clouds, would they change the water and reflection color? Because you, you got no sky on this painting, right? So say you got storm clouds up there. How would that affect your water, uh, the colors of your water? And oh, yeah, for sure. I would I would definitely change the color of the reflection if that were the case. Um, so if I had a dark sky, this was assuming that this light, light blue violet color on the reflection was assuming that there is a light sky reflecting off of it. So if I did a stormy sky up there for sure, I might go a little darker, but I probably wouldn't change it a lot. It'd be a little difference. You know, I, I would adjust accordingly. Now, I, my typical workflow is to, oh, there's Ben. I, I switched to the Ben camera. Didn't mean to. <laughs> I'm so, awake. Yeah, yeah, he's there. Now I'm here. the- I'm here, last call for questions, I'm here. Yeah, my typical workflow is, is to, if I'm serious about the, the picture that I'm painting, uh, I'll pre-mix my, my sky color. I'll get the sky figured out so that I can take that color, darken it appropriately for the reflection color that will be on the water. So I'll actually use the sky color. In this one, I did this without even painting a sky. And so and so uh, it's it's just, the I just don't care about it as much, but that would be my workflow to let you know. And yeah, I would change. If it was sunset, I'd use sunset colors. If it was stormy, I'd use darker gray. Okay, from here on out, it's just it's just uh, getting in any last comments, answering anything. Ben, is there anything that you think we're we're missing? No, I think we got a happy class here. So uh, uh, mm. thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, I appreciate seeing you guys from Mexico, uh, yeah. Russia. I mean, amazing. All right, sweet. Yeah, uh, same here. Super big privilege. Thank you again. We're gonna wrap it up and. Uh, I want you guys to know that while this is the last of this series doing the water painting workshop, it is not the last video by any means. There will, uh, I'll continue to be putting videos up here on the YouTube channel. Stay tuned. We got in a couple days our newest video that we're actually turning into a show. And I'm super excited about that. And there are also more live streams to come in the future. It's just, uh, this, will, this will be the conclusion of this water painting workshop. Definitely take a look at my website, muraljoe.com, and you'll get lots more of, of the same, same kind of explanations in the videos that 
we've made. Okay, that's it for now. I'm going to look forward to seeing you next time. There's also a mailing list that you can sign up for before I fade to black here. You can get on a mailing list on my website and be notified in advance if you really like to try to catch these shows while they're live instead of just watching them back later. Okay, that's it, and we'll see you guys next time.